day we're here with Bravo and we're looking at a dislocated shoulder obviously this has been dislocated and now it's been relocated um, and we're now dealing with the aftermath and trying to rehab him there's a few complications with this one so what happened is he put his hand out in baseball sliding for a base and he got his arm caught in a, in a divot wasn't a divot and he dislocated his shoulder now because his arm was outstretched he's then dislocated it forward and down um, so the basically if you come in this way his shoulder and the socket has come down into here now to do that what's happened has he's done two things he's torn his labrum like a slap tear and he's also torn a big ligament at the bottom of the capsule of his shoulder in the front called the inferior glenohumeral ligament now what he's going to have trouble with is stability and the front of the joint from pressing and throwing in time. At the moment, he's not going for surgery because we are waiting to see how his function improves with strengthening and time and healing and rehabilitation. And can he then create a joint that is more stable? The moment what he's lost is what we call as force closure, as form closure. So if in his in his joint at the front, his labrum has torn, so he's lost some integrity of the actual labrum hooking onto the bone, but also the ligament at the bottom of the front is torn, so he's got a very much unstable form closure or ligament and capsule around the joint. So he's going to have to make up with that with force closure, so increasing the rotator cuff control and strength as well as the stability of his shoulder. Now, if you look at Bravo, if you look at his left shoulder, okay. There's his left shoulder there. His right shoulder, if you can see this, he's got some winging. Now this is some pain and injury mediated winging. So what's happened is because the pain injury in the shoulder, his brain is then switching off his stability muscles in his shoulder to immobilize his shoulder. So his shoulder blade is sitting forward and out like that's because his serratus anterior that's sitting under here is letting go. And the other thing too, he's losing a bit of function with the shoulder. So when he tries to raise his arm forward, if you watch, if you watch, do both for me, bravo. Do left, go forward. Now, come back again. When he raises his arm, look at this left one. If we just focus on his left one, raise your left one forward for me. Did you see how that stays stable? Okay, now watch this. Watch this area here when he raises his right. Did you, did you see that? Okay, so his show, whole shoulder went down which is very wrong try that again for me see that okay now what's happening there is his brain is letting this go to escape some pain and to escape some instability so when he raises his arm forward if he just launches his hand forward and keeps his shoulder blade stable that ball is most likely to come forward now when it comes forward the labrum in the front is not very stable because it's been torn and his ligament and his muscles at the back, like his infraspinatus, are turning off. So they're not governing and holding that shoulder back, blade back. So when he raises his arm forward, his body goes, hey, no, 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 don't do that. And okay, so he's getting a movement pattern dysfunction in week one. So it's already happening, which with physio, we've got to try and re-stabilize him, getting doing some postural exercises to try and stabilize that. And I'll show you those in a minute. That's a very classic movement pattern dysfunction disorder we've got to try and improve for his whole function to improve okay so if you graze forward for me tell me when that pain comes on and whereabouts yep go forward about there now if you look at that he's not even at shoulder height and this is where in week one we do not want for surgical clients we don't want them going above 60 degrees for bravo he's a dislocation client he hasn't had surgery we don't want him going above 90 degrees because there's no point he gets pain before 90 and his movement pattern dysfunction is no good so the exercises in week one and our program for shoulder rehab are all below shoulder height okay and they're certainly not long lever loading like this in front so all the rotator cuff is all static you'll see it's all pushing forward back and sideways and externally interrotating but not letting the shoulder move. So it's very much a static rotator cuff move to try and hold that joint together and switch all that on because the brain is switching it off. And we've got to get this um, stability of this muscle working, his, his rhomboids working, we've got to get his serratus working, we've got to get his upper traps working, we've got to get everything switching on so his shoulder blade sort of sits beautifully like that and is more stable. And so therefore he's got a better chance of getting his rehab going. So if you go into your front for me, bro. So, 
Lie yep, lie down. So apart from all the static work, so his external rotation work where he's pushing out, he's pushing inwards, he's pushing forward, he's pushing backwards, all isometric static work for his shoulder is all good for a rotator cuff, but what about the shoulder blade? So for him, bring your arm up into here, again, if you, if you think about, okay, if he was standing, his arm is in neutral, okay? So it's a nice position for Bim to be in. Now if you just put it by your side there, brother, that's it. What we want to work on is getting him working on, yes, a little bit of rhomboids. They do help stabilize, but it's not a massive focus. We want more lower trap, and we want him having the ability to retract the shoulder blade and get those muscles working without rowing, okay? Because he can't row because he can't get his arm up to 90 degrees. So he needs to do this movement. Now, just doing that when you're standing, there's no sort of resistance. Gravity will help us this way to get some sort of resistance. So, Bravo, what I want you to do, think about your right shoulder. I want you to lift your right shoulder up off the bed, aiming for your left corner pocket, okay? So lift your shoulder up off the bed, aiming for the left corner pocket. So I'm telling him, diagonal across like that. So he's working on, hold it there, he's working on rhomboids, he's got a little bit of upper trap going but mostly lower trap going, so a bit of depression down into there, pulling his shoulder blade down and back, which is the postural muscle system I'm working. Hold it there for me, brother, is that okay? Yep. yep. Now I want you to raise your hand off the floor. Here's the load, can you raise your hand? Does that hurt? Yeah, a little bit. Where does that hurt? Um, where you Front? Yeah, where you were massaging. Oh, here. Okay, that's fine. Drop it down again. Now, he's getting pain. He's complaining about pain in here. Now, I've just loosened that up. His rotator cuff, his lateral rotator cuff, so his infraspinatus and teres minor, have gone into spasm. And the reason they've done that is they're trying to protect and almost like pull the ball of the humerus back in the socket because it doesn't like going forward because that's how he dislocated it and there's some instability in the labrum in the front so he doesn't want it to go forward. So the body's very clever. It does deactivate those muscles so they sort of switch off but they go into spasm like a guarding mode. So they'll go and tighten that up and what that will do is make him very tight and dysfunctional here but safe for him. He's more stable that way. So when he tries to activate that muscle it hurts a little bit but as it, because it's not threatening for him, so you'll find that the stronger that gets, the less pain he'll have with that. And it's not an injury pain here, it's a dysfunction pain because of the injury. So try that again for me. Back corner pocket, there's his scapular retraction depression, and then he adds some load through his rotator cuff there, and even that's hard enough for him. Can you hold it there, bravo? Can you rotate your thumb outwards for me? What's that like? You okay? Can you hold it for 10 seconds? So he's doing external rotation. He's got a little bit of tricep going on there. External rotation, trying to pull the ball back in the socket to stabilize, and he's switching on his scap to stabilize. It's an endurance hold. 10 seconds, then down, relax, let it go. Waits for 10 seconds, and then repeats. So back with the arm again. Pull that back for me. Down to your corner pocket, good. Raise your arm. There's the load through the rotator cuff. He's done some extension and lateral rotation. No, extension, lateral rotation is what we want. And remember, this is the precursor stuff, and he's doing external rotation to doing band work. But he can't do the band work yet because there's too much dysfunction and pain going on, and it's only sort of week one. We've got to wait until he recovers a little bit more, gets a few postural muscles going, a little bit of time, and then we can progress to week four and six where he's actually doing some more banded work and starting to work harder with it. Okay, so that is his... Um, what we call a one-arm skydive, extremely important, and he can do lots of that, and you'll probably find that he'll be able to improve that over two or three days, and then by the end of the week, he'll be a lot better with that, and we can move on to start doing some scapular rows because he'll be able to raise his hand up a little bit higher because of all the posture work he's done in the shoulder to allow him to do that. So the next one is when he's um, sitting during the day. So if you ever sit for me, um, or he's standing, you can sit or stand, you know, he needs to be active during the day, and if you ever stand sitting that way, this, sit on the bed before we rub it, this shoulder now, he needs to be making sure that this shoulder blade doesn't slump forward. So what will tend to happen is the shoulder blade will want to wing and slump forward and everything to switch off. And that's going to cause him tightness in the front. It's going to cause him weakness in the back. We want to keep him active. Now normally, you know, like his left shoulder will be active all day. It's fine. It just sits there posturally. When you've got an injury, you get a lot of deactivation and we need to sort of switch that back on. And we can do that, um, but he has to be conscious about it. So what he's got to do, um, don't fall into the trap though of just 
hauling your shoulder blades back and thinking that I just need to pull my shoulder blades back. He needs to set his scapula. So what the best thing to do is, is to let it roll forward, bring it up, pull it back, but then bring it down. And bringing it down stops him bringing it in too far. It also activates his lower trap. And when he comes out, see he's nice and flat now, I don't know if you can see that, but he's switched a few things on there and he's not winging now. Now that he's done that. So that little cueing for him has really worked where he brings his shoulder blade up, down, back and down and then his serratus anterior is holding him at that point, keeping him abducted, keeping him flat. He's got his rhomboids on, keeping it stable there. He's got a little bit of trap on, he's got a bit of lower trap on and he has to stay there. Over time he'll fatigue, let it go for me and it pops forward and then he resets it again. Up, roll back and he needs to think about this all day, every day until it, the natural resting tone improves that it just sits there like that and that'll be a, you know, a few weeks down the track. Okay, so that's the scapula setting. And the last one is pressing work but again if Bravo was a surgical client he wouldn't be doing pressing work until week three but we can start that now because he can actually get his hand um, into four points. So if you come on to all fours for me Bravo, so meaning hands and knees, so down into hands and knees. Now this point here, you okay like that? So he can be in that position, that's fine. And at this point here, what I don't want doing is I'm not going to go and load his right shoulder. Okay, I don't want him raising his arm yet, that's the next stage. There's no point raising his arm and trying to load this, even though it's a static position, just because of the damage through the front here, we don't want to aggravate it too much. and We don't need to yet. So, but what we can do in this position is the weight, it means there's a little bit of load bring, so he's naturally got a little bit of tone switching on here, so he's active. And what we want to do is scapular work here. So from this point, he's going to go into a classic scapular press, which is so important for your serratus, is letting yourself drop down here, bravo, but not letting the arms bend, and keep going, keep going, keep going, keep your head up, and then push through the floor and push away, push my hand to the ceiling. So he's doing his body is moving up and down, but because it's a closed chain movement, if you look at the shoulder, what's happening is he's retracting and protracting. Okay, looks like his body's going up and down. You see him shaking a little bit there. You can see it's enough load from already, so we know we don't want to push him any further. So try that again for me, brother. Retract, push forward, and protract. And it's important that I teach him to make sure he's got a, no, other way around. The oh, you're right, externally rotate. So his elbow pits need to be facing forward, not facing inward. So he's got that external rotation here to keep him safe from the joint, protect the labrum and the ligament in the front. Down again for me, retract, protract and push up. Good man. And down again, so you'll be doing repetitions of this. And so you can see it's a static glenohumeral joint work. It's isometric but he's learning to accept load and stability so the next stage he can move on and do harder and harder things. You okay? All right, so that's it for this stage and we will see you next time.